Have you ever been on a chairlift, gazing down at your skis and thought, isn't this a bit strange? I mean, who would have thought that strapping your feet to some wooden planks would become our favorite winter pastime? But hey, that's what we look forward to all year long. We all love hitting the slopes with our families and friends, creating amazing memories while enjoying the thrill of skiing. But did you know that skiing wasn't always the leisure and sport activity it is today? In fact, it was a lifeline for the ingenious people who first came up with it. In this video, we're diving deep into the fascinating history of skiing. We'll explore its humble beginnings and how it evolved into the popular winter pastime we know today. If you're looking for the best deals on booking sites and our favorite ski gear, don't forget to check out the links in the video description below. Skiing has been around for a very long time. In fact, ancient cave drawings in Central Asia show that people used skis during the last ice age, which began 100,000 years ago. We don't have any physical evidence from that time, but we do have artwork left behind by our ancestors portraying people with skis. The earliest ski artifacts were discovered in Russia and are believed to be from around 8,000 years BC. But many ancient skis have also been found in other areas, including Norway and China. These skis were quite different from what we use today. They were made from long pieces of wood, about two meters in length, and had horsehair covering them. It's hard to imagine skiing on those skis nowadays, right? We're not exactly sure who invented skis or where it started, but we do know that it was originally used in areas with heavy snowfall to help people move around for hunting and getting from one place to another. We know for sure that the Sami people in Scandinavia have been using skis for hunting since the time of the Roman Empire, and later on, the Vikings in Scandinavia used skis to help them get from one place to another. The type of downhill skiing that we practice today wasn't invented until the 18th century. Before that, skis were used to walk on top of snow and transport you from A to B. But in the 1700s in Norway, alpine skiing was actually developed from military activities. The Norwegian army organized competitions to test their skiing skills. They would ski down slopes, navigate through forests and snowy fields whilst also shooting guns. The modern day Olympic sport called biathlon keeps the essence of these competitions alive. The trend of skiing downhill quickly spread to the public in Norway and sped ahead in terms of skiing for leisure and sporting purposes in addition to military uses. Then, in 1809, a man named Olaf Rye from Norway did something remarkable. He became the first recorded ski jumper even though ski jumping hadn't officially been invented yet. Olaf bravely jumped through the air, covering a distance of 9.5 meters right in front of an audience. This pushed the limits of what people thought they could do on a pair of wooden planks, and during the 1800s, skiing became a popular sport and recreational activity. Norwegians started skiing on racing trails in the mountains, and during this time, the design of skis improved, especially with the invention of the cambered ski in Telemark, Norway. This ski had a curved shape that evenly distributed the skier's weight along its length. It also helped prevent the ski from sinking into deep powder or holes. In the first half of the 1800s, Nordic skiing, or cross-country skiing as we know it, was the most popular style. However, during the mid-1800s, there was a shift in focus from cross-country skiing to downhill skiing. The reason for this change was that skiing downhill at high speeds provided a more thrilling experience compared to skiing across flat terrain. In 1868, Sondra Norheim created the Telemark ski with toe-only bindings, which had a side cut that allowed skiers to carve instead of sliding sideways. This innovation changed downhill skiing forever. Skiers were now able to choose a line with precision rather than slide sideways. As the sport progressed, the world's first ski school was opened in Norway in 1881, where people could learn technique and form from experienced skiers. At this time, skiing had spread to other countries in Europe and the popularity skyrocketed after the first Winter Olympics held in Chamonix in 1924. During these games, alpine skiing was still in its early stages, so only the more established style of Nordic skiing was included. However, the love for downhill skiing grew and soon this style was included in the 1936 Winter Games hosted in Germany. In 1928, Rudolf Lettner from Salzburg, Austria invented the steel edge ski. These skis provided better grip on the snow and allowed skiers to make sharp turns while going downhill. Around the same time, Hans Schneider, in a nearby valley, developed the stem turn and parallel turn, which introduced a new style of skiing. These techniques are still used and taught today. 
Schneider established the first ski academy, called Albergschule, in St. Anton, and became a prominent figure in early ski films. He is recognized as a pioneer in skiing. During the 1930s, alpine skiing became popular worldwide. It started in Europe and North America, and later spread to countries like New Zealand, Japan, Australia, Chile, and Argentina. Hans Schneider traveled to Japan in the 1930s and introduced more advanced skis from Europe. He was hired by the Japanese government to teach skiing to the public on a large scale, with thousands of people receiving lessons at once on Mount Fuji. It's said that the lessons were conducted using a loudspeaker. This marked the beginning of the first skiing boom in Japan. The huge skiing boom paved the way for further inventions and something groundbreaking happened for skiing as a fun activity. The chairlift was invented. It all started in 1936 with the first chairlift installation in Sun Valley, Idaho. This invention completely changed the game for skiers. Resorts everywhere started developing different types of lifts, from rope toes to gondolas. These lifts made it much easier for skiers because they no longer had to climb up the slope on foot, which is tiring. Instead, they could sit on the lift and be carried up the mountain. This meant that skiers could enjoy skiing down the mountain multiple times a day without getting exhausted from the uphill climb. Throughout the years, ski resorts have expanded and flourished becoming a hub for people from all around the globe. These resorts now attract thousands of visitors every day. They offer a variety of amenities like shops, restaurants, various types of accommodations, and a range of activities. This means that a ski vacation is no longer just about skiing alone. While skiing was initially developed as a way to survive and travel, its significance has evolved. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. See you next time.